And I want to say this to the television audience. I made my mistakes. But in all of my years of public life, I have never profited, never profited from public service. I've earned every cent. And in all of my years of public life, I have never obstructed justice. And I think, too, that I could say that in my years of public life, that I welcome this kind of examination because people have got to know whether or not their president's a crook. Well, I'm not a crook. I've earned everything I've got. How I became involved in the analysis of the Watergate tapes. While most people are aware of the Watergate scandal, here's a bit of background for those who are not aware of it. The Watergate scandal was one of the worst political scandals in the history of the United States. The scandal began when five men were arrested for breaking into the Democratic Party offices on June 17, 1972, and ended up with the resignation of President Richard Nixon on August 9, 1974. When somebody says Watergate, they're usually referring to the Watergate scandal. The name came from a complex of buildings in Washington, D.C. called the Watergate Complex. The headquarters of the Democratic Party was located in the Watergate offices. Several men who were trying to get President Nixon re-elected as president decided they wanted to spy on the Democratic Party. They hatched a plan to break into the Democratic Party offices in the Watergate building. On May 11, 1972, they broke into the offices, took photographs of secret documents, and placed wiretaps on the phone. At first, they got away with it. However, they tried to break in again on June 17, 1972, and this time they were caught and arrested. President Nixon and his staff tried desperately to cover up the break-in. Nixon denied any knowledge of the activities and said his staff was not involved. He managed to keep his name out of the scandals for the election and was re-elected president in November of 1972. Two reporters from the Washington Post newspaper, Bob Woodward and Carl Bernstein, were investigating the burglary. They had an anonymous source they nicknamed Deep Throat, who told them that the president was involved. It turned out that several members of the White House staff knew about the break-in. President Nixon had been involved in the cover-up as well. He had provided hush money to the burglars. He had also used the CIA to try and stop the FBI from investigating the case. Despite the mounting suspicion that President Nixon was involved, there wasn't any real proof. The Congress needed a hard evidence in order to impeach the president. Investigators soon discovered that Nixon kept tapes of all of his conversations in the Oval Office. Investigators asked for the tapes, and when Nixon refused, the Supreme Court got involved and ordered him to turn the tapes over. The tapes were the smoking gun, and they clearly showed that Nixon had at least been involved in the cover-up. In November of 1973, the United States District Court for the District of Washington, D.C. assigned six technical experts the task of verifying the integrity and originality of a number of audio tape recordings. They were listening to find out what happened to the 18-minute gap. Some of the members uh, of the Audio Engineering Society were um, Richard Bolt, chairman of Bolt, Newman, who became the spokesman, and then we also had Franklin Cooper, president of Haskins Laboratories, uh, Tom Stockham, the digital audio, and John G.J. McKnight, chairman of the Audio Engineering Society. They uh, did the initial research, and then when they began to get other ideas and other people sending ideas, they included other audio experts, including myself. Why? Well, here's a bit of background. I was working at a studio called National Recording, and I was doing research and soundtracks for Army security films, including How to Clean a Rifle, Welcome to Fort Dix, Welcome to Fort Todd. And uh, I received A1 security clearance level four from training films. And uh, therefore I wound up uh, one of the people investigating the Watergate tapes. Around June of 1974, while reading a newspaper, I saw an ad searching for an expert in sound and audio. I answered the ad and I received three copies of tape recordings. Several men stopped by my house and asked if I was Fred Weinberg. I said yes, and they asked to see the studio. Apparently, there were CIA men. They left the tapes and asked me to sign a document 
of secrecy. Then I started researching and listening to the tapes for erasures. Subsequently, I found about seven or eight erasures, and uh, my wife came running down from the bedroom upstairs from the studio saying, what is that? I said, these are the Watergate tapes with Nixon. And she said, get rid of them. They're going to throw you out of the country. You're a naturalized citizen. They're going to throw you out. Return the tapes. Well, I did my report, returned the tapes, and that was the end of the story. What's amazing to me is the similarities between the Watergate tapes, the investigation, and the present investigation into Donald Trump's background. I shall resign the presidency effective at noon tomorrow.